Welcome back. Striking Customs and Immigration Officers returned to work today, this after staying off the job since April 5th, protesting the shift system, among other issues. At a press conference Tuesday afternoon, attorney representing the union and president of the Trade Union Congress, Obi Ferguson, confirmed that the striking officers would return to work today. Their matter, which was referred to the Industrial Tribunal by Labor Minister Dion Folks on Friday, is now set for a hearing tomorrow and Friday, April 19th and 20th, in Court No. 1 Monument Building, Oaksfield. Another man shot and killed on the streets of the capital overnight. The victim was at an establishment on Lightbourne Avenue in the Rock Crusher area off Farrington Road. He was reportedly approached by a man and shot multiple times to the body. Officer in charge of the Southern Division, Superintendent Ashton Greenslade, spoke on what is the country's 39th murder for the year. Officers responded where they met the lifeless body of a dark male lying at the entrance of this establishment, uh, suffering from gunshot wound. Uh, we are the initial we are the initial stage of our investigation and we're appealing to members of the public who might have seen something to contact the central detective unit at 502 triple nine one any information you have will be kept in the strictest of confidence so we're appealing to members of the public to please reach out to us so we could uh, solve this homicide well, one man is currently in police custody in connection with this matter Convicted drug dealer Melvin Maycock Sr. was fined $250,000 or he'll have to spend two more years in prison. This after the Court of Appeal dismissed his appeal against a three-year prison sentence. He's currently serving on drug and gun charges. Deputy Chief Magistrate Carolita Bethel sentenced the 45-year-old to three years in prison last October after finding him guilty of having some $1 million worth of drugs, an assortment of guns and ammunition. Following the appeal Tuesday, the court raised the issue of the leniency of Maycock's sentence, indicating that the magistrate did not ascribe sufficient weight to the aggravating factors, including the quantity and street value of the drugs, noting Magistrate Bethel went far below the sentence range imposed in similar cases. The appeal court stated that the fine of $250,000 is appropriate. Now, if Maycock can pay the money, he will have to spend an additional two years in prison. After some six years of negotiations, the Bahamas Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union finally signed a new industrial agreement today with Poop Deck Restaurants. According to Hotel Workers Union President Nicole Martin, which represented the restaurant employees, some 52 employees at Poop Deck East Bay Street will benefit from the five-year contract. Martin highlighted aspects of the contract. We were able to maintain the benefits that currently existed, um, health and welfare, the Employees Assistance Fund, um, Christmas bonus, all of the benefits are intact. What we are most pleased with is that in this climate, we were able to accomplish an industrial agreement with a 20% increase in base wage over five years. That is, that is no small feat, um, and it was something that we are happy with. Well, Poop Deck's restaurant's manager, Freddie Lightborn, lauded the hotel union's negotiating team for promoting good industrial relations with the company. Over the years and uh, the persons that I've been involved with in this contract, uh, you have made it, uh, you've been by far the most professional. And um, I'm sure that's a testament from the new leadership on behalf of the union. Uh, we have, uh, we've been together for many, many years, going back to the 70s. Uh, some easy years, some not so easy years. Uh, we appreciate that the uh, union understands that uh, there are good years and bad years, and that we all have to survive through both of them. And uh, there's there has to be flexibility on both sides. Welcome to tonight's edition of the Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Altaviz Munnings. Let's take a look at what's making business news today. City Market's principal, Mark Filmerson, told the local daily that a deal to sell the supermarket chain's remaining four stores to Super Value 
had been finalized, adding that attorneys are still sorting out the paperwork. Finlayson suggested the deal might close on Wednesday. The local daily also reporting that the Bahamas Information Securities Exchange Index listing for APD Limited should be launched in a matter of days. The $10 million offering has given Bahamians a little over 115 shares. In international business, American Jim Yong Kim was tapped by the World Bank's board Monday to be the organization's next president, following what was the first ever challenge to the U.S. nominee in the institution's history. The bank's board of directors said in a statement that the multiple candidacies enriched the discussion of the role of the president and of the World Bank Group's future direction. And from regional business, Lime announced it is rolling out a slate of low-cost prepaid mobile internet service packages with rates cut by as much as 66% in Jamaica. The telecommunications firm said in a release that its postpaid mobile internet rates would remain the same, but the data allocation for both the casual user and regular user packages would be increased. Remember, you can send us an email or join us on www.znsbahamas.com or become our friend on ZNS's official Facebook page. And that will end tonight's edition of the Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. I'm LTV's Mudings. Thanks so much for watching.